Welcome to Film Talk. My guest today is an elegant woman, a real African woman. And for 40 years, she's been married to another film star. That film uh, star that she's married to is veteran actor Olu Jacobs. Stay married, enable them to, you know, uh, establish a media group for production, consultation, distribution, training. Being an award winning movie and stage actress, director, producer, and as a pioneer manager of Malete Film Village, I hope I'm right, right. <laughs> in partnership with Kwara State University, she did well. All came from education and practice and experience from Holy Child College, University of Lagos, that's UNILAC, Department of Creative Arts, all in Lagos. She also spent 10 years in Nigerian Television Authority, NCA, and the National Theatre, both in Lagos. Mm. She graduated from London, United Kingdom's uh, prestigious Robert Douglas Academy of Dramatic Arts. JK has acted in plays like Vagina, Monologues, and Hearward, centered around gender appraisal of sexuality <laughs> and sex itself. Beyond sex, I'm questioning her explanation to the social impact of gender sexuality as both have impacted on the traditional Yoruba definition of womanhood. <laughs> so welcome to Vim Talks, Joke. <laughs> Thank so, you so much. Thank, thank you, you so coming. much for having me. Okay. I Let's start with some explanations or some <laughs> expressions that I saw some when I did some research. Yeah, sometimes people try to expose what's wrong with you because they can't handle you, you know, what's right with you. Surround yourself with people who will lift you higher. Whoever is trying to bring you down is already below you. Don't be deceived by, this should go to the young people, <laughs> by whatever they see on social media because obviously a lot of celebrities are living fake life. Would, would you shed some light on that, please? Okay, I think I'm going to start with the third one, with the last one you discussed, mm. you mentioned. Now, um, I always find that, I always find that um, comment very derogatory. Mm. Yes, I find it very derogatory because I really do not think, um, and a lot of times it is, it is aimed at the, female practitioners yeah, in the yeah. industry. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, people tend to like to perpetrate uh, a way of thinking about people in entertainment without realizing that when you're an entertainer, when you're a creative, let me use that word, mm. when you're a creative, the way the Lord has us wired is that we have many ways of expressing our creativity. And so I, for example, as an actor, um, one of the things that I discovered I like to do is to produce plays. I like to produce plays. I enjoy directing plays, you know, when I have the time. Um, and then I love teaching as well, all right? So those are many expressions of one being a creative. Um, several years ago, uh, oh, many years ago now, I think probably from 1993 till, till the early 2000s, I used to teach in some of the Ivy League schools in, in Lagos. And what was I teaching? I was teaching elocution and speech dynamics. I was teaching drama in schools. So by the time, by my third year in teaching, you know, I had, I had like teams that I was working with. So if, I'd, if for instance, I'd be teaching a class in, um, in Atlantic Hall in Maryland, they were in Maryland at the time, I'd have a session there. And I would also have a session at the same time at Corona Papa, you know? And so what happened was that members of the team would be the ones teaching there. And so what used to happen was that I'd be rotating myself uh, you know, well, whilst my, my team members handle some of the classes, but I'd make sure I touch each school. What, you know. And so the uh, once earning capacity, you know, it, it was multiple streams of in income. Now, I know so many of my colleagues who are actors who are also into real estate. Mm -hmm. So they tend to market real estate. And if you're in real estate, excuse me, the, the, the commission you get on that is pretty high. You know, um, I know a young actor who is an incredible um, baker. He makes amazing cookies, mm -hmm. all right? So that's another form of expression of, of his, um, of his uh, talent. And then um, a lot of um, artists now are, even though they, um, it may not be their job, but they invest in a particular work. And so as investors, 
if the film does well, they will make a lot of money. So, but because they portray themselves as actors, they portray themselves as actors because that is their first love, that is their passion. But there's not that, there's not um, sometimes going from work, to, from, from uh, project to project to project in acting. At the same time, it's not necessarily that it's going to give you that amount of income that will support the kind of lifestyle that you like. So you have multiple streams of income. So that's the way I would explain. Let me that. also, uh, you know, inject some. Uh, when I was in Minaj many yes. years back, uh, yes. I, know, I used to know some presenters who would come online or come on on, on the station. Mm. You know, present one or two programs for like six months. The next six months they disappear, and when they appear in Aso Rock or somewhere in Abuja, oh, you're the actor. Come and have a contract. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Uh, yes, I yes. suppose the show winners and all is all about is all about brand promotion and all that. You know? Yes. So yes, yeah. yes. Some actors live well. Yes. Some so it's, don't. It's it's, it's a way of you know just maximizing their brand. But I would also say that I mean a deep person like you mm. had so much to give society mm. when you were, you know, growing in the industry. But what about the shallow ones who just come and show off and convince the young ones that this is how life is and the young, the young ones copy them and do the wrong thing? I think that is a slippery slope mm. for one to go into because I know some young actors who are incredible hard workers, incredible hard workers, and because of the kind of work that they do, mm. they are supported by some of the biggest brands, mm. all right? And um, so a, a lot of times where people want to go is that, oh, they're sleeping with this person or they're sleeping with that person, either whether male or female. Mm. And my, my, my response a lot of times to that is that you will find that some people believe that that's the way to... To, to get success at, you know, quickly, mm. all right? And, and in, you, you know, you will find that in any profession. Okay. You will find that in any profession. It's not only in the entertainment industry. The only thing is that because the entertainment industry is in your face, you know, you just assume that that. And, and you will also find that there are a lot of people who try to take that shortcut, shortcut who then find that, it actually isn't a bed of roses and it actually doesn't yield what they expected that it would. I'm happy that you, you at the end of it, you're very objective about it <laughs> by saying uh, that. Yeah, I mean, this, no, because, this, I, this, because I know that that's where you're pushing towards, but yeah. I felt it's very important to give the other side of the co mm. coin, you know, um, because everybody's always thinking in that direction. I think it's unfair. There's some very hardworking young people out there. Well, uh, that shouldn't be. Whatever negative uh, <laughs> portrayal that anybody would have about actors and actresses, I mean, that shouldn't be also be a yardstick, especially for, you know, uh, the Yoruba woman, whom you're going to really, really talk about today. The Yoruba woman, you know, has portrayed herself so well in movies. When, whenever there is bad news on CNN or Al Jazeera or BBC, do you know what I do? I tune to Yoruba channel <laughs> because I love the songs, the melodies, and I, I, and that takes me back to 1998 when I was in Jaligo. One early morning, I woke up in the morning and I, I, I heard this press and worship song, you know, way down a hill, and I love the melody. So okay. I'm always about, I so love the melody, I had to use the melody to write a song about Jalingo. Okay. <laughs> so for me, I'm so intrigued when Yorubas, when Yorubas produce movies and somewhere along the line, you cannot miss who they are. It's either superstition or dance or music or food. And I love that a lot. <laughs> so in other words, what I'm trying to ask you now is that how influential has what we've been, we've been talking about in the past few minutes being on the Yoruba, really traditional Yoruba woman, the one that you could compare to Fumi Ransom Kuti. I find it very interesting that you, you mentioned Fumi Ransom Kuti because I do know that there's a work that's coming out on her pretty soon. Mm. Um, now, you know, um, women who, when you look at a Fumi Ransom Kuti, for instance, it's mm. that, it's that um, can, it's someone who really believes that 
poverty is not a disease. Mm -hmm. It is just it happens to be that that is the um, the social situation. A, a social, exactly. So, so uh, uh, an, an accident of birth. Okay. All right. Um, and so, and you know, I find that a lot of, and, and I'm sure it's not just the Yorubas, but I know that the Yorubas are brought up to think that way, mm. that wherever you find yourself is an accident of birth. So just because I come from very uh, middle-class, comfortable family, I could easily have come from somebody who was struggling to sell uh, 20,000 naira worth of pepe on a daily basis. Or cocoa. Yeah, or cocoa. Or, you know, it's an accident of birth. And so you do not have the right to treat anybody any different. Mm -hmm. And you will find that because of that, there is always this belief that everybody is entitled to some basic level of of, expo of, of dignity, of expo um, uh, is entitled to ed education. You find that with our lower, you know, of healthcare. It's, it's just part of the worldview. Um, so when, when, when we're looking at a formula or a subkuti, I would say that let us then go back to a, to a Pele Wura, for instance. A Pele Wura, who um, many years I ago, um, I, 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 I think she's, she was this woman who fought the British because they insisted on taxing the market, um, market. Uh, I, I don't know, but everybody's been talking about Fumi. Yes, but even before Fumi lie around, oh, yeah. there was a um, Pelewura in the eighteen in the uh, late eighteen hundreds and early um, nineteen thousand, where she that's had. Why, that's why I brought you here. Yes, <laughs> where, where 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 she had she she brought in two thousand. Um, people into the Glover Memorial Hall to protest the taxation of market people. Mm. 2,000 people. This woman, you know, she's, I mean, incredible. And then you, I mean, you look at someone like, uh, like um, uh, Madame Tunumbu, you know, another woman that I find incredible. You know, this woman, um, she, she, she was an astute politician and she owned so much she was so wealthy and um, she became she was so wealthy and so politically savvy that at some point the, the, the governor of Lagos had to send her back to to Abekuta because she was giving him too much stress. Abekuta seems yes. to be a town where activists really really came from. Why? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. Oh, I, okay. I think I think it had to do also with the fact that there was a lot of um, exposure. Okay. Um, I think it had to do with the world view as well. Mm -hmm. The world view in which it, it was it, there was always an yalodi in the palace because they ran a an, an aristocracy. Mm -hmm. It was an aristocracy, but the there was always the representatives of the people within the palace. So you would have the, you would have, uh, apart from the chiefs, you would always have the representative of the women who was the Yaludi. And that was one of the problems in the time of Fumilayor and Somkuti. There was no Yaludi. Okay. And so they, they were maltreating women. Okay. Yes. There will be, usually in the palace, there must always be a representative of the woman to put forward the woman's point of view. Mm, yeah. So who's so, not saying women didn't have empowerment or didn't have uh, powers in homes? Because I know that women held a lot of economic uh, power within African homes, even before yes, the white man came. Definitely, I think I think we 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 as a people regressed in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, I did some research some years ago, and I realized that okay, I've mad mentioned Madame Tunubu, I've mentioned Bulewura, I've mentioned you know Fumilari and Sankuti. Now you, we had people like Gambo Sawaba. We had you know, and that's talking about the north. We had um, Margaret Ipo. Like Margaret Ipo in the east. You know, we had Sambu uh, yes, Sambo was up north. Uh, uh, Gambo Sawaba, mm -hmm. well, you know, and so these these were women who were in the forefront of. They were always political. They were all in the forefront of politics. But then you now say that move forward so many years and women in the political space have kind of disappeared, you know, because you had, um, I mean, and in the other fields, you will notice that in, 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 in medicine, name the field, women have flourished mm. to the point now where you cannot say, oh, I'm the first person that did this, I'm mm. the first. Thing. But 
somehow or other we've retrogressed when it's come to the political I, space. I mean, you think that, I mean, if you... And, sorry, and the reason for that, actually, is because of colonialism. Mm. The colonial people, uh, the colonial masters came into Africa and they came as men. And so they came as men and left their women in England or Portugal or wherever. So it was just the men that came. And so they were not prepared to see a civilization where women, really where, where, where women mattered. You know, they, could, they, they just couldn't compute it. And because there was always that divide and rule and, you know, trying to, and, and also what tends to happen is that um, the, the conquered tends to copy the conqueror because yeah. that seems to be the better way of life, you know. And um, so that was what brought about that gender disparity. That we that we now started experiencing in our in our social economic life. In this is Africa. film talk. I'm talking to an intellectual <laughs> person. You can gauge you get silver. You know, give it up. I, I, and incidentally, my next question, you know, as we encapsulate yes. the reason why some of you touched on it. Yes. I mean, why is it that over the years uh, we seem to do movies that are lovey dovey kind of Women, especially these days, are, you know, I just interviewed somebody the other day. All she did was about, you know, well, she made a statement because she, you know, Shanty Town. Have you okay. watched Shanty Town? No. About, about the fight against subjugation, you know, marginalization, you know, okay. Uh, okay. and that, that women sense. fought back and killed a criminal, you know who use them for prostitution. Oh, wow. Good. My, my point is that how much... Do, I, do, I, I did a script on Fumi Lai Ransom Kuti for certain getting networks many years back. Okay. Up to today, it's not on screen. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so, so my problem is that with all these beautiful women in the past who gave women a sense of power, you know, why is it that we're not making movies, the media and the same industry is not making movies to portray them, to bring them out, and even inspire the younger ones who are now crying out through obedience movements against the system. Because the women were in the forefront, like Fumi, and the other one he mentioned, like Sambo or Margaret, Margaret, mm. Margaret Deco. It would have, the fight would have been, I mean, the, the voices would have been much more credible. I mean, let nobody detach political statements from movies. We have to make movies to speak for the people. So what happened? Um, part of it was what I said, which mm. was um, that, that retrogression that happened within the society. Mm -hmm. But what, what's, what's um, pretty interesting is that for years, um, what happened was that the people who dom dominated the film industry, the early years of the film industry were men. Mm -hmm. But even then, even though they were men, they were also, they also told a lot of stories that gave agency to women. So if you look at people like Paul Gundi, for instance, mm -hmm. his wives, okay, he says that, you know, and, 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 and I won't say he says, he married a lot of them because he wanted to give them that, that, that cover of respectability. Mm -hmm. um, but these women not only start... Would you agree on Fela with that respectability? He did the same thing in the music industry, you know, gave them a... A, a sense of cover. Yeah, yes, uh, of respectability, mm -hmm. you know, by, by marrying all of them. And I, I remember, she's late now, there's a lovely lady that we worked together on a, on a project called The Golden Cage. Um, her name escapes me now, but she, she left school to go and dance with Fela. She, you know, she was so enamored by the Fela queens. She left school, went to dance with Fela. Her parents disowned her. She, she satisfied herself as a dancer with Fela and then went back to school and became a professor. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, she was such a, she was such a, such a successful um, uh, teacher of, of theater arts, of dance especially. And she was one of um, Hilda Dokubo's teachers in Port Harcourt. Yeah, so it's a, it's a real life character. I'm not, I'm, it's not something, I, it's just that her, her name escapes me now. She's, she's passed away now, um, you know, very sadly. You know, but back to what I was saying that, you know, the I'm women, the, 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 yes, the women were, not only did they play the lead roles, 
as you know in the in in their theater. In, in, in the films mm. well in the theater in the films they and what was interesting about the portrayals in those days was that these women had complex characters they were just not saints halls um, bitches and you know there were saints the, the the saint the hall the bitch and there's there's one other one that you know that's usually the norm Run in, yes <laughs> you know not only did they do that, they were also very technically savvy as well. They used they were they were filming on celluloid, and these women, especially Ogunde's wives, were the ones who used to handle the camera. Imagine. Yes, they would load the camera, you know, to to play back. You know, um, taking the films around. They loaded the camera. They loaded the films. All right. Um, they were they were very in, in, involved in lighting. So all of them you know, understood how to handle the camera, how to, I mean, how to handle lights and things. But they also understood how to load the camera. How, I mean, they were incredible women. They understood production. They were, they, they were the costumeers. They were, you know, so he had a whole, a full production company. And the women were usually in charge, even though he was the head hunter in charge. But the women were, very, you know, were in charge of a lot of the technical departments as well. So they were the ones who, you know, those were the early years. The men were the, um, were the ones who owned the production companies. But fast forward, apart from people like Lola Fanikayodi and, and later Maka Igwe, who wrote, um, and uh, Bumi Oniso, you know, who wrote stories about women of all complexities. Mm. Somehow or other, that thing that I was saying about men writing stories about stereotypes and even some women copied that. Mm. Some female writers yeah, copied that and days. wrote stories about stereotypes so that, and I, th and I think what tended to happen, you know, what tended to happen was that it, it was always about what sold, mm. you know? And so if this, if this was what was selling, mm. uh, uh, a film about uh, a witch, for instance, mm. everybody that came afterwards was making the witch more horrific. More, and if it was about a snake, you now, my snake is bigger than yours movie. <laughs> we went through all that. But I think things are coming back full circle. There's women, I mean, you have people like Adetiba, who are writing incredible, amazing work. You know, King of Boys. You have people like Jade, uh, Jade Oshiberu, who, I mean, her work, I don't know if you've seen The Trade. Incredible movie. She, I, you know, she's the one, I, I think she got a three-picture deal or so many picture deal with Amazon. She, and they're, they're about to come out with Gangs of Lagos. You know, her, her, the, the way women are beginning to own, take agency and own the industry and tell the story not to just please the audience, but to... Empower themselves. Not, not only empower, but to critique the society in a most engaging, interrogative way. That's what Shanti Town did too. Yes, to interrogate the society and not whitewash anybody. Do you understand? There's a lovely, there's a lovely series that I'm in now that's called The Olive. That's where the season two is coming out in, I think, in April, April 7th. And the tagline is, um, good people are bad too. Sure. <laughs> you know, so those interesting work that not only um, shines a light and is a mirror, but also suggests how yeah. we can interrogate, this is the problem, shine the light on the problem, but suggest how we can fix it, develop, you know, aid our development. Yeah. You, you said so much about Ogunda and the rest of them. Can you yes. tell me a little bit about your beginnings, your teen, teen beginnings to 20s? Because I seem to see those stories in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just a great fan of Ogunde. Oh, Part yeah. of my early years, you know, I always wanted to um, work with the, with the organization, with the Ogunde organization. But unfortunately, I never got to never got the opportunity but i used to buy all their tapes oh. and you know i'd i'd be in my bedroom like 
3 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. in the morning, dancing to his music. Really? And my mom would kind of hear, like, the sound of she and she'll come and meet me in my bedroom, and she'll see me, you know. There I am, I'm dancing, and she'll join me. <laughs> And the two of us would dance to a good day song. You know, I just found, I, I found, I loved his, his, the quality of his voice. And then I loved the music as well. Um, my early years were, yeah, I, I was very lucky that after drama school, I got to work with um, Lalak Fanny Coyote on Mirror in the Sun. And I worked with Grace, Grace Egbagbe and uh, Tina Mba. At in the in in NTA on Second Chance, you know. So I was I was working on those two programs at the same time, which meant that um, I was I I had a huge network of some of the top quality performers of the time, and um, and one was well mentored mm. by all of them. Yes. I, the first time I saw your husband Lou Jacobs was yes. in a movie. I, was, I think shot in Casablanca. Am I right? Hmm. I'm not sure whether it was Casablanca but it's not or Seychelles or something. Uh, which one of them was that? Oh, okay, I've been uh, in many. Uh, uh, yes, he's been, he's been in lots of foreign films. Yes, really? yes. There was there was Baby. Baby was shot in Tunisia. I know. I know. No, sorry, Baby was shot in um, Ivory Coast. Hmm. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, it was uh, Pirates was the one that was shot in Tunisia. Um, there's another one that was shot to say shells. Um, so did you slow him down by marrying him? Because I mean, if he's been there and he came back oh, to yes, he's the, No, 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 no. I had nothing to do with it. It was something that he felt the Lord was asking him to do. Mm. You know, um, we were both in England at the time and he just kept saying, you know, I can hear, I can hear the train. I can hear a train. And I said, well, I mean, I, I definitely wasn't going to stay in England. I just didn't like what I saw with the setup in England. But he also wanted to come back home because mm. he believed that he had reached for that time for a black actor, the zenith of his career in, in, the, in the West. Mm. And he felt that this, this was the new frontier. Nigeria was the new frontier. frontier. It, it, was, it was hard. It was seriously Which is hard. What I was just yes. about saying that. Yes. I mean, if somebody with so much, you know, uh, experience yes. had come back to Nigeria and he couldn't really stretch his arms mm. to impact. Mm. Something was wrong. Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's that you, you need to meet your country where your country is, you know. Um, a, lot of, a lot of diasporans still face it till today. When they come back home, there's always a pushback from people who have been here and have slogged it out for that length of time who will say, excuse me, you're coming from over there. What about us who will be here? What do you think we've been doing? Just, <laughs> you know, um, there needs to be that working together so that we can move faster. We can, because they're bringing experience that we don't have and we have the experience that they don't have. And the two together can open up such incredible doors. But I mean, somebody said some uh, recently that it was on the back of Olu Jacobs that the new Nollywood was built. Fantastic, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and it is, it is a, a, an accepted, um, statement. And I want to say that, I mean, you just said bringing the diaspora to the native, yeah. which has happened for Japan, that's happened for Taiwan. So what's wrong with us? Um, I, I, it's just us understanding, because sometimes it is true. I mean, one has seen it. Diaspora comes with arrogance. Mm. <laughs> native, native comes with insecurity. Like when I go to my village, I say, don't you know where they won't keep in this village? <laughs> native comes with insecurity. Yeah, that's right. So both need to remove all those prejudices, all, all those prejudices and work together. If, if the working together can help, it take, because it takes, it takes so much mm. from both sides and you don't realize that whilst you're still butting heads, time is going. And before you know it, years have gone. And then before you finally realize that this is what we could have done so many years ago, 
you know. So it's, 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 it's very important for us to be able to welcome our brothers who, have, who, who are in the diaspora. They should come wanting to work with mm. and talk and speak with, not at. And we must, who are here, must be ready to welcome them and be prepared to work together and share, learn, learn. There's a lovely buzzword that's a buzz phrase that's going on now, which is learn, unlearn, and relearn. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a constant thing that we must do in various facets of our lives. Yeah, so, so apart from the yellow year, you know, power base that the Yoruba woman had, at, whether at home or in the palace, what modern factor has been able to push people like you to the forefront of the media and entertainment? Run that by me again. <laughs> Jam question. I'm saying there must be, I mean, there's a traditional <laughs> factor. Yes. Yeah, and there's, there should be a modern factor. Yes. Like we say, diaspora meets native. Yes. There yes. should be a modern factor that also mm. have the traditional, you know, up, you know, on air, the traditional power that enable people like you to stand out. Mm. I remember a lot of people, let me just put this just on it. A lot of Yorubas went to Liverpool in those in the 60s. Yes, my would mother that, was one of those. Okay, would she, that be, she, would trained, that... she trained in uh, Liverpool. She, you know, her first, yes, she went to Liverpool before she went to Michigan, yeah. Would that be a factor, education, exposure? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, people like myself, I mean, I, 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 I trained as an actor, mm. you know. Um, I started out here at the Uni, Uni, Unilag Cultural Center, you know, in my gap year, Unilag Cultural Center, and I got to be exposed to the works of Bodhi Osoyi, mm. and, and uh, I worked with the likes of Jidi Ubumbade and, you know, um, Edith Enem at the National Theater, and, um, you know, so there were, you know, before I then went to train, um, at the Weber D. So training is, was a factor. But you also find some Yoruba women who are at the top of their game in this industry who came in from other, um, other areas of expertise mm -hmm. and, and have done incredibly well and have brought, in, and have brought their, their acumen, their business acumen into the industry and just shot the industry to another level. I'm talking like people of people like Mo Abudu, who came from cons, con, um, uh, consulting, you know, into, into en, en, um, entertainment, bringing that business acumen into the industry. I'm looking at someone like uh, Bolali Austin Peters, who, I mean, she's, she's always been on the, per, uh, on the periphery of the industry, but she's bringing her legal background into um, the the industry and it's it's definitely paying off. And then when we look at the Yoruba industry, honestly, the women in the Yoruba industry are just so incredible. I, I look at someone like um, Funke Akindele. Funke Akindele has a, uh, a media empire that you, one must respect. Mm -hmm. One must respect it. You know, sure. the, 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 the kind of work that she churns out and it's, it's, it's almost working, it, it, it's, without her there, it can run, mm. you know? Um, you look like someone like, like Tony Abraham, again, you know, these are people who make movies, who make movies for the market, they have an audience, and they make movies for, the, for, the, for their audience. You have, um, you know, a, 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 and it's very rare for you to find the Yoruba actor. They will not, they will, you, you, you don't realize it, but they have their own production companies and they're making movies. And some, a lot of them are making movies for the, for the home video industry that, has, that is still alive and well. <laughs> you know, they're making films in Yoruba and, you know, they're doing exceptionally well. You have, and a lot of them have their own equipment, and um, they're, 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 just, they're, they're just amazing media and entrepreneurs. Um, so I, 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 I believe what it is is that you have some who have apprenticed, mm -hmm. all right? That's the form of training that they have. Um, people like me who went for formal training. But something that I always like to em um, emphasize is that Formal training or apprenticeship, even when you get your freedom from apprenticeship and you finish your formal training, that still does not make you a total, an accomplished actor. 
Unless you practice. Yes. Be constant practicing. Over several years, uh, John Gil Gilgood, the late British actor, actually said it this, put it best like this. Now, when you finish drama school, another 14 years of working in theater, in film, in television, before you can call yourself a competent actor. That's very really right. <laughs> I'm still talking to Joker Silva. You can see I'm Pittsburgh. <laughs> so, yeah, my next question. I, I want to take this to some quotes from the Secret Latter Women. Oh, okay. Alongside Colin Firth and Nia Long. Yes. And the following dialogue ensued. Nene said, why are you not married? Nimi Da Silva said, if it matters so much to you, find me a husband. Find me a husband. Then yes. they said, what kind of husband? Foolish auntie? Yes. Dasova said, honest enough to take on Sami and me. I'm brave enough to know the truth. And he's romantic as well. I'll marry him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, this dialogue, you know, seemed to, you know, uh, bring up images of the independence I am my own woman. I can be a single mother. Do those lines of dialogue indicate the 21st century woman, let's say the Yoruba woman's definition of relationships, especially with single mother would becoming a trend? I, I'm not so sure that it's supposed to be a trend <clears throat> to just answer you immediately because what you notice in that film is that they, you know, Nene, which is a character that I play, and then um, Nia played um, uh, Nimi. You know, Nimi that Silva. Yeah, now, Nene herself was a single mother. Okay. Okay. Um, and she didn't want that for her, for her child. Oh. Her child, her child is a single mother as well. And, you know, um, she didn't want single motherhood. They are both, Nene is first generation uh, Jakba. As we call it now, <laughs> she's a she's she's you know, a very, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, she, she's she's actually a first generation, um, uh, you, you know, um, not it's, uh, what's the word now? Windrush. No, somebody who has traveled and and lives abroad. I, 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 um, Tokumbo. No, she's not a, a, a Tokumbo. It's somebody who returns. Okay, okay. She never returned. Okay. Nan Nanas, you know, lives in. Um, abroad, but she's first generation, all right? Nimi is born there. Okay. Yes. So she doesn't want Nimi to be a single parent, so she wants her to get married, yeah. you know? And and so, so that's why I'm saying, and, you know, within the world of the play, you see how the women all come together to make sure that even though, you know, they, they find her a husband, some, you know, somebody who, is, who they think is right for her, you know, and then it works out that, no, he's just too, too over-righteous, you know, not, not the kind of person for the kind of spirit that uh, Nimi has. And, um, but what, what that film is projecting is the... Just because you're a single mother mm. doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You find the same thing in Uru Olojo. Uru Olojo, that's the character that I okay. played in Uru Olojo as well. This, this girl who got pregnant whilst she was still in, in university mm. and, uh, you know, she then had to, oh, you know, she then had to, you know, she was lucky with the mother that she had who allowed her to, um, to continue her education you know, and she ends up further down the line getting married, but it's, it was a while. She, she, took, she took control of her life and provided for herself and her child, you know. So I, I think films like that try to tell you that being a single parent is not the end of the world. And ma is marriage mm. a beautiful thing? Yes, it is. You know what I'm asking you? Right. Because if, when single, when women are single, yes. it's still long to get married. Yeah, exactly. A year to get married. Yes. So is it the men that are the cause of broken marriages? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> 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 How am I supposed to know? I think, I think uh, there was, it was, it's very interesting that you're talking about this because mm. this morning um, in fellowship, we were discussing um, one of the chapters in Proverbs mm -hmm. and how it was talking about adultery and how, 
you know, the man reacts to, to the act of adultery, mm. infidelity. And part of the discussion we had was that infidelity causes so much pain for both parties. Never forget that. It is both parties. Yeah. So, which is why the Lord Jesus Christ, I love what, you know, when they tried to stone the woman found in adultery, he said, you who have not committed a sin through the first stone. Mm. And you, if you can look at that, that in that, in that um, we're just using adultery as a, as a symbol. In that situation of infidelity, even if you say the man is the one who has not been faithful, mm. what did the woman do to cause it? Mm. If you say it's the woman, what did the man do to cause it? There's always, what, what the Lord saw, what the Lord was saying to us mm. was that there's always fault on both sides. Yeah. There's always fault on both sides. So you need to, we always need to take a step back when we're in a relationship, I think, to my, I'll, I'll, I'll round up this way. My, um, my uncle who married us, who married, you know, we had two priests for our, for our joining the, you know, when, when we first, you know, when we had our, when we got married for our white wedding and my uncle was one of the priests, Canon Ulumide. And when we went for marriage counseling, you know, before the wedding, one of the things he said was that both of you must realize that you both have clay feet, you know, and for us, you know how you are in the, in the first flushes of romance and all that, you know, the, the other person can do no wrong. They say, no, but he kept, you know, but looking from his years of experience in marriage, he said, it's the two of you that have clay feet. Neither of you is a God. So when you, when you realize that in your relationship, even when one person hurts, hurts you, realize that you too can hurt you, 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 there's some part of you that's created that hurt, but there's also, um, a, you should also realize that you can create a lot of hurt for the other person. Neither of you is perfect, I guess. We're all humans anyway. Exactly. <laughs> it's the human so, condition, yes. So what stage or movies, uh, movie plays would, or movies would you, stage plays or movies would you say have really portrayed the Yoruba woman and why you mentioned a few i think in the past minutes you mentioned a few movies yes i've i've mentioned the wuro lojo mm. i've mentioned you know i mentioned the wuro lojo but you know if you're looking at theater i would say um in here word for example you would find you would find that some of the monologues are looking at the yoruba woman someone like uh, iyaloja that mm. i played there's Yoloja, there's, um, then there's Mama Temilola and Mama Azuka, mm. a, an Igbo woman and a Yoruba woman, both wanting the same thing for their children and bringing up their children the same way. But one is, is the Tush elite woman and one is the village woman. And they're both saying exactly the same thing. Um, you have plays like that. Then you have a play like Hada the Country. Also, again, looking at the, the uh, Yoruba household getting married to an Eastern household and how, um, but we're not, we're not actually looking at the ethnicity mm -hmm. of, of both. We're just looking at how the woman needs, after a tragedy, you know, it unfolds that there were all the hiccups that have, that have happened in their marriage, that the two of them need to, to heal from various wounds that they have inflicted on each other. And, you know, the, 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 the journey to that healing. Um, I'm not sure, I think, yeah, so I'd recommend those ones, yeah. You've said so many beautiful things about women. I wish um, our filmmakers, I don't know what movies are coming out that are being made by, by women. Oh, several. I, I, I hope that such films will come and change the way everybody behaves. Why do I say, use the word everybody? Women are very influential. And if we keep on pushing movies that talk about women with a sense of direction, sense of purpose, I think our society will change for them. Do you agree with me? I do, because I think that um, maybe if we saw more women in, in decision-making in decision uh, positions, if we saw more, you know, more women as governors, we saw more women as presidents, we saw, you know, the society would be ready to have them because we seem to be retrogressing in that respect. 
I hope that will come to pass. <laughs> yes. Would you always want to co-produce The Kingmaker with Ulu Jacobs? Um, definitely. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've done it. Of course uh, you would. <laughs> but we need to do it again. That's what I'm saying. Yes, if any other yes. ever comes, yes. why would you do that? <laughs> no, because I think, I think um, with the kind of platforms that we have now for, mm. for dissemination, of of our of work mm. i think it's it's important to to rewrite such a story and y y just bring it up to the to the 21st century mm. you know because we we, we king maker was done when 2007 and there's just so much that has happened in our political mm. arena that would be interesting to include in something like that and it will still be very topical in, in in before I forget, I, yes. it just keeps coming on and keeps going. But before I forget, in the year what mm -hmm. you play the role of a bad woman who married an Ibu and man and was taking advantage of married or wrong. No. What happened? Was he was he, well he was yes, he was not from her um well he was not from her side of the country, but we're not sure where he came from. Okay. Yes. So I mean, well, you know, yes. I, mean, I can sure see. I can, what that told me was the urban Yoruba woman who is moneyed, yes, who has a shop, is yes. rich, yes, could be weak. Weak? Why? I'm taking advantage of it. in the play, we're talking about you. Somebody, he took your money. Yeah, and, I, I, and, I, and <laughs> yeah, well, well, he no, no, no. It wasn't that she was. She she didn't see through his facade. You know, he, he, he pretended that he was the landlord of a place and she realized that he wasn't. But then she realized that she had enough and she could make enough to support the two of them. She liked being married and she liked him. I, I see a lot of that these days. When you, <laughs> have you been watching through a reality test on Facebook? No, I haven't. You don't? Please go no, and watch. No, I should. Okay. A lot of young girls, yes. you know, take care of men, empower them. They become, you know, rich men, and before you know it, they ditch them. The same thing also it used to, you know, used to be, the other common, the common one used to be men, you know, lower men, maybe they are, you know, schooling and putting a girl through university, mm. and the girl will say, you're not mm. educated. Mm. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 that used to happen, yes, yes. I, 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 I just think that, you know, sometimes you can say that, you know, what's around is the spirit of Jezebel, in which opportunities, there are more opportunities for women than there are men. Mm. Um, and if that's the case, the likelihood of that happening, of women being the ones that would be the providers, is pretty, is pretty high. However, um, it doesn't seem to be the right order of things. And if we can, that's me speaking like, you know, a 62-year-old person. So the no, younger people... Speaking like... <laughs> <laughs> the younger people may not agree. The crucified. But, <laughs> yes, but, you know, you just think that um, uh, relationships are partnerships. Mm. They should be partnerships. They, the weight should never be one on, one, on one person because it, it doesn't brew respect. I think, I think it's the... Uh, obliteration of the traditional rules that, like I said before in the earlier in the interview, uh, women, our traditional African women, used to have a sense of power, economic mm, power, mm, mm. because you they've always had. You, you couldn't harvest palm oil or palm fruits, and the woman wasn't in charge. Exactly. <laughs> yes, and and they would get the best price and things like that. And yeah. they would be the one that would that would manage the economy of the home. Yes. So the guy would always get what he, he deserves, mm. no more than that. Yes. And the family was strong. Yes. So that traditional aspect of building the family in modern times has really really gone bad. Mm. Mm. What's your advice, Mike? I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of advice do I want to give anybody? I'm still learning. Yeah, I'm still talking yeah, to, so I'm still talking I'm to still the intellectual, Joker Silva, who is still learning. <laughs> this I'm is still talk. learning. I'm still learning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, would you have a closing remark for the young ones, for the old ones? A lot of, a lot of young old people are behaving, behaving like, you know, young children now. <laughs> so, hey, how? And, uh, if, a lot, I think society has, you know, really, really changed to this, to this thing that uh, maybe hardship, maybe culture, maybe, you know, what would I say, trauma, social trauma, has caused a lot of people to not to reason. Uh, some people will say, stop and think. People don't stop and think anymore. No. 
people don't lie back in their beds and think they just act because it's a trend. Yes. What advice would you want to give such people? I think you've said it. It's it's it's, it's, it's that is you you it you are spot on. Stop and think. We're not rational. A lot of our behavior is not rational. In a way, it's understandable because, you know, with the, in the era of social media, everything wants to be served hot, hot, hot within 24 hours. You know, there must be a response. There must be speaking. You must talk. There's, there's power in silence. Mm. It gives you... Silence affords you to be able to see things from all as many perspectives as possible so, before you some, make a decision, before you make a comment. Too many people are just not thinking. Mm -hmm. And in this era of social media, where social media, which is a brilliant tool, all right? It's a brilliant tool, but it is a tool that needs to be handled with responsibility. The, the, the power of social media to be able to inflame a nation is very high. And so it must be handled with responsibility. Well, that's Joker Silva for you. That's the last line. Thank you for coming on Film Talk, ma'am. Thank you. It's been good having you. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me. Thank you for having me. <laughs>